Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again. In the last video I showed you how to use the ball turning attachment to turn uh, simply a radius on the end of a shaft. And this time we're going to turn a full ball as I have just done here. And this is a one inch ball, one inch diameter ball of Delrin plastic. And we start with a slug of uh, Delrin such as this blue piece that ha has already been drilled and tapped to fit into uh, the shaft. You have to turn a ball on a shaft or else if it's going to be part of the uh, uh, shaft itself you'll have to have an undercut. I'm at the Atlas lathe right now and this uh, ball turning attachment is a homemade attachment. I did not make it. It came with my 10 inch south bend but it also works pretty well on the Atlas lathe and uh, the only problem on both lathes really is there's no way to set the tool on the center other than shim. So I did have to use about an eighth inch shim here which is between the compound and the attachment itself. And I made up an assortment of shims out of sheet metal, different thicknesses so I can get uh, any height that I want. But right now I am right on center. The ball turning attachment consists of a frame that is bolted directly onto the compound and I had to make a special T-nut for that. This is a half 13 bolt. And on the frame there is a yoke and the yoke has a square hole that will hold the quarter inch uh, high speed ste uh, steel tool. And we can pivot it here with a handle back and forth. So all of the feeding is done with uh, this handle other than we also use the uh, cross feed to feed in. But the carriage has been locked. There are commercially made ball turning attachments. I think they're rather expensive and but they're probably more universal and uh, better designed than this one. Although this one isn't too bad for a homemade uh, device. I do not have plans for this and I, I cannot help you with uh, uh, building one of these if you are interested in it. Now the uh, tool is held in there simply with a set screw on the other side so it's rather difficult to get an accurate uh, adjustment of the tool. The other limitations of this is that we do have a lot of uh, chatter and vibration due to the fact that we have a lot of overhang here of the tool. We know that's going to flex a little bit. Also if you look at the entire frame here there's a lot of room for flexing. Plus the work itself is held on a shaft that must be moved out from the chuck somewhat so that the yoke will not strike the chuck jaws. So all of uh, those uh, flexible extensions that I just mentioned here add together to give you a lack of rigidity. Now it works very well with this Delrin plastic but with aluminum uh, I have experienced some chatter unless I take a very light cut and I do not think it is capable of turning a, a ball out of steel although I have not tried it but I that is my hunch uh, in regards to the way this thing operates. In order to set the tool for a given radius, and in this case it's a half inch radius, which will give me a one inch ball. And uh, I devised this little uh, fixture here, or a jig, that is uh, really held into the hole right here. And it's on the center line. But if, visualize if this shaft went all the way through. Well, I have uh, milled away here so that surface right there is on the center line. And then if I measure here from that flat surface to the tip of the tool, loosen the tool so I can move it in and out and set that for exactly half inch using a all half inch square or a gauge block. It doesn't need to be that accurate because mostly when you're turning a ball is for ornamental purposes and is not all that critical. And uh, Believe me, with this there is no real easy way to set it because there is no uh, uh, handle here to feed in the tool. It's a fixed thing that has to be done using this little uh, fixture that I came up with. And it is set for a half inch radius right now and I will mount uh, this half inch slug of blue Delrin 
which is one inch in diameter, one inch long, and uh, we're going to turn the ball on it. I may have misspoke. This is one inch diameter and one inch long Delrin. And uh, here's how I use the fixture. I will bring it all the way up until it touches the tool, or the, till the tool touches the, the work rather, and lock the carriage so the carriage cannot move. Now I have to back out the cross slide so that we can take our initial cut. And another thing you need to do is to determine that you are truly halfway, uh, that is the tool is on the center of the work so that we're touching both here and when we're swinging it around and we're touching here so that we're, we're centered this way which should uh, happen automatically if the work is one inch long and we're touching the end of it and this is set for a half inch radius. That, sh that should be a given, but you want to double check that. And make sure that it clears and doesn't hit the uh, chuck jaws. And I got that set just to that point where it won't hit the chuck jaws. Now all I do is pivot this yoke back and forth around the work and each time I'm feeding in about a quarter of a turn with uh, the cross feed. And you can cut in both directions but I notice that I get a better finish going one way than the other. And I'm coming around here all the way until the yoke actually touches the shaft. And that's as far as I can go. The stringy chips are a little bit of a problem. And I have to make sure at this point that I don't go any uh, uh, past uh, perpendicular to the end of the work. They're a little tricky to use and you need to practice with them. Stop for just a second and clear those chips. And now I'll continue there just a little bit left. I think the capacity of this uh, attachment would be about uh, a three inch ball. I don't think I can turn much smaller than a one inch or the tool extends too far. And there we have it, a one inch diameter Delrin ball. And I would uh, proceed to unscrew it off of the shaft or the mandrel. The shape of the tool I'm using is like one of these universal tools, only without any side rake on it. So it feeds, uh, or it cuts pretty well going in both directions. And that's what the finished ball looks like. And there'll always be a little bit of a, of a straight part uh, near the end, unless I reduce the diameter of this mandrel. And it might also work a little better using a collet attachment rather than a chuck because then I think we could shorten the whole thing up a little bit. This is one inch diameter Delrin and I have undercut this and extended it out I think uh, enough out of the chuck and uh, this is not being held on a mandrel but directly on the stock but again you have to have this neck so let's see how this works.
there isn't quite as much rigidity here because that is plastic rather than steel. chatter that time. This may be my finishing pass. Now it's going to take a little bit more. take a look at it. And here's what the, the finished balls look like. Now this could be trimmed off here if that was bothersome or redesigned so you didn't end up as much with as much of that as uh, what I have here. The white Delrin doesn't show up nearly as well on camera. Pretty good finish. And there's the other one that I turned on the stem. And uh, depending on what you're making and the design of, of what you're doing, you know, would determine whether or not you had to do it on a mandrel or if you could turn the ball directly on the work itself. Here's a couple other balls that I turned uh, several days ago, off camera, of course. And this is inch and a quarter Delrin. And I just used a parting tool uh, to make the undercut, so that's why that's kind of irregular. And here's an aluminum one, and I did get chatter with that. It was a little bit more difficult to do, and I had to take lighter cuts. And that is how you turn a ball on the Atlas lathe using a ball turning attachment. I hope you found this interesting. It's a Tubal Cane saying so long for now.